If you're a fan of robots, it's probably not the robots that abuse the forms on your website. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the reCAPTCHA API to secure the forms on your website. The reCAPTCHA API is pretty simple to use and it really helps cut down the number of spam submissions that you get on your forms. So let's get started on showing you how to implement that into the forms on your website. So here on the IdeaPro example site, we're going to create a blank page. This is a WordPress site, but we're actually going to use just a page, just a regular HTML page for the site. So here in Sublime Text Editor, which is what I use, I'm going to create a new page and I'm going to call it test.php. And we're going to put it in the root of IdeaPro slash example. So test.php. And so then we'll just go here to example test.php. All right, so this is the page that we've created. So now we're going to create a simple form. So method is equal to post action and we're going to leave that blank for right now. So if you leave that action blank, it will actually submit to the same page that you're on. Now this is not recommended for production use because this is actual an HTML error. So you want to have it submit to something uh, and, and we can talk about that in a few minutes. So here in the form, we're going to create an input field and we're going to do this as simple as possible. So we're just going to say um, your name, right? And so let's create another one. Input type is equal to text, whoops, name is equal to email. All right. And then here we need an input type is equal to submit name is equal to, uh, we're just going to say submit form. And then the value is equal to, whoops, uh, submit your information. All right. So this has our basic form. So if we save this, refresh, there's no styling. So it's very, very simple. We'll add a little bit of style to it. Let's say placeholder is equal to your name. And then, whoops, placeholder is equal to your email address. Then we can, we'll just add a break to it. Actually, we'll add two breaks just to give it a little bit of spacing between each one. All right, now this is a really basic form. Your name, email address, and submit your information. Now you can hit submit, it doesn't do anything. I mean, it refreshes the page basically is what it, all it does. So now we're actually gonna do something with this. So here, whoops. So here with PHP, we can capture the post because we're doing a post here. If this was an act, if this was um, get, we, we would use the get method. So we're going to, if array key exists, and we're going to use this here, submit form, submit form in the post, we're going to actually do something. Now, the reason why we want to use array key exists is because if we just say, if dollar sign underscore post form. So if we do like this, if we say if dollar sign underscore post and in the post array is submit form, whoops, is equal to submit your, actually I spelled that wrong, submit your information. This would do the same thing, but this is actually, we're saying that form, def, uh, every time this page loads, the post exists and submit form exists in it. So we're not going to use that. We're going to use if array exists, 
submit form. So the array key, this key is submit form and it's in the post. So if array key exists, submit form in the post, we're gonna echo out the post. And so what I did here is these are the pre tags and here in the middle is a print R which prints out the array. So we're gonna save this. Now we're gonna go back here and we're gonna put in the name. Um, email address and submit information. So now we've submitted the form and it gives us back your name, email, and submit form. So now what we wanna do is we wanna actually do something with this information, but we're not gonna worry about that in this video. This video is just to show you how to use the Google reCAPTCHA API, okay? So here on this page, which is google.com slash reCAPTCHA, and you can search for that in, in Google you'll wanna sign in with, with a, a Google account that you have. So we've not added anything to this account. So we're going to actually register a new site. So we're gonna say Idea Pro Example, recapture version two. And then down here, we're just gonna say ideapro.com. That's really all we need to put in here for the domains and you need to use your domain. So we accept the recapture terms of service, send alerts to owners. So you can leave that on so that you know how many people have submitted and how many successful or, you know, or unsuccessful. And so then we're gonna say register. So now it's gonna tell us, here's our analytics, request passed and failed, sessions completed, spam index, you know, this will be information that you'll use later on once that you've been using it for a while. So here we've got keys. We've got a site key and a secret key. And I'll explain these in just a second. Client side integration. So this is what we'll be pasting into our form. And I'll show you that in just a second. Now right down here is the server side integration. And I'll explain this as, as we go through. So key settings, if you come down here, this is the key setting. So we've got the label, we can change the label, we can add domains. The owners are joshuaherbison at gmail.com, that's my email address, and I can add in owners on a different line that want notifications. And then down here there's advanced settings, and a lot of people miss this setting. So what this is, is you open up advanced settings, and this is the security preference. So there's easiest for users all the way to most secure. So if you slide it all the way over here to most secure, what's gonna happen is, is when someone goes to the site, they click, I'm not a robot, it's actually gonna show up like images where they have to say, it says select the road signs and they have to pick all the pictures that have road signs in it. I always start off with easiest for users. If I see that a site's getting a lot of spam, I'll go back in here and increase this so that it, limits the number of spams that we get. So for, especially for development, I usually keep it on easiest for users and save changes. All right, so now we're gonna go back up here. So we've got a site key and a secret key. This site key is the public key that will be displayed to users. So up here in PHP, we're gonna see public key is equal to and we can pretty much do that. And then we'll say private key is equal to, and we'll go back here and we'll get this private key. So we'll, we'll use that there. So now we have the secret key and the private key here in our PHP. So then we'll come down here and we'll grab this script tag. So we'll go down here. I'm gonna put it underneath the bottom and then this div here, I usually put it right above the form submit button. And so now this is the, um, where the actual reCAPTCHA, I'm not a robot, information will show up. Now if you see data site key, this is the key right here that's up here. So we can take this out and replace it with the PHP variable. We don't necessarily have to, but if we ever change the key, it keeps us from having to change it in the form. We can just change it right up here. 
Now again, I'm submitting this to the same page. I recommend submitting it to a thank you page or something like that. You know, thank you .php, and we create that page that says thank you for submitting the form. But for this testing purpose and just to show you how this works, I'm gonna leave it like this. Okay, so now we're gonna save this. And now when we go back to our test.php example, now we have your name, email address, I'm not a robot, and submit your information. So if we submit this information without clicking, I'm not a robot, we get your name, email, recapture response, submit form, and so what this is is the GCAT recapture response is what we're gonna pass through to Google for them to validate the information. If we click this, that says I'm not a robot and we submit the information, now we get this long response in the GCAPTURE response, okay? So from here, we're gonna start using the information. All right, so we're gonna go back over to here and right down here, it tells us the URL that we need to submit to. So we're gonna copy this and I like putting everything into variables so we're gonna put in a variable of URL. And that's gonna be a pretty simple variable. So we've copied that. We're gonna put that variable in here. Okay, so now it says secret response and remote IP. Now this is what we're gonna pass through to the Google reCAPTCHA API so that we get a response from them. So we're going to come down here and we're gonna say, dollar sign response is equal to file get contents. Now what that is, is it's a function that's pre-built into PHP that basically sends out, gets a response from the URL that we put in here, and then it replies, then we get the response back. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna put in the URL, and then I'm gonna make a couple of single quotes, and then we're gonna need the secret. So, whoops. So question mark secret is equal to dot, and then we're gonna put in private key dot, and then and response equal to, and that's this one here, response, response is equal to, we're gonna use the post that was submitted from reCAPTCHA. So if we go back over here and we look at this reCAPTCHA response, this key here is gonna go as the um, response key. So here we can say response key is equal to dollar sign underscore post, the reCAPTCHA response. So response is equal to response key. And then the last thing is the remote IP address. That's the end user's IP address. Now that's not critical, it's not required. So this is just an option. I always use it just to make sure and we'll pass through the remote IP equal to dot, and then we're gonna use the server remote ADDR. Okay, so now this file get contents response is gonna to submit to this URL, which is the endpoint URL. It's gonna pass through the secret, which is our private key. It's gonna pass through our response, which is what came from the G reCAPTCHA uh, little box here, and then it's gonna pass through a remote IP address. And so then we're gonna echo out the response. Okay. So we're gonna go back over here, and we're gonna say, I'm not a robot, and submit. So now what we have is we've got our post up here that's this information that was passed through. And then down here, we actually have a JSON response. 
and it says success is equal to true. So now we can go in and we can tell it to do something with that response, All right? So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna come up here and we're gonna say response is equal to JSON decode response. So now that we now what we've done is we've changed this from a JSON response to an, an array. Or it may be have changed it to an object. Let's see. So we're gonna go ahead and resubmit it. Submit. Okay, so it saved it as an object. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to say if whoops. dollar sign response, response, success is equal to one, whoops, echo your information was valid. We can actually do whatever we need to here to submit the form, send it by email or whatever else. You are, oops, you are a robot and we don't like robots. Okay. We're actually gonna turn off the echo up here. And so now if we submit this without anything in it, so let's go to, let's put stuff in here and we're not gonna submit this, we're gonna just hit submit. You are a robot and we don't like robots. So that says, hey, you didn't fill out what you're supposed to fill out. So now we're gonna try it again. Now we're gonna say, I'm not a robot. Submit the information and your information is valid. So from there, you can take this and you can add it to um, sending an email with the contents of what's going on. You can um, do whatever needs to be done to finish out the form submission from there. And we can show that in another video. Actually, I want to build a plugin that is a form for your website using WordPress. That way you can, uh, we'll walk through the process of building a simple form that's a plugin that you can use anywhere in your website. And so whenever I build that, hopefully it will be pretty soon. I'll link that video in the description and at the end of this video here. So I hope that helps you build a, um, use the reCAPTCHA API to help to secure your forms on your website. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to future videos. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.